Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek Hello. break, and talk about all the fun <laughs> things going on in the world of open source Linux. And uh, what is it this week? Oh, switches, clicky mouses. Yes. yes right? <laughs> that's the way we do it. It's weird like that, but we are in Vin Stone. That's Jill Bryant and one Pedro Mateus and you at home Hello. joining us live. How's everyone doing? It's a Wednesday. Yay. Yay. I love it Wednesdays. Is, it, it, <laughs> you know, it's been a week since the last one. Uh, yes. <laughs> there's another couple of days left till it's Saturday. <laughs> uh -huh. And we get to say uh, disparaging remarks about each other's uh, parents live. <laughs> Not really. I just do, said that your mom said you were special and you strongly disagreed with that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because she never did. <laughs> <laughs> Too real. Too real. What's up, everyone? Uh, Pedro, you, you, you have a mic not only mm -hmm. not just any mixer you no uh it's uh that uh, very apparently it's the exact same model you had just with the added usb out mm -hmm. uh on the back that i found on ebay for 20 pounds 20 pounds what are you supposedly arriving tomorrow or friday we'll see <laughs> mm. do you have any big plans or are you going to start um pedro gamecast uh no that no. I'm, I'm just going to uh hopefully with that one i'll have enough juice to amp this microphone run it to the uh mdx 2600 mm -hmm. and then we can make use of it because it's just been sitting there i was wondering because it's like yo we're <laughs> gonna like borrow nori's mixer you're like yeah i don't want to lose any digits man <laughs> 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 she's been yeah now that she has like the shotgun mic all set up and mm -hmm. it's really nice she just sits down and sings and plays the guitar and it does an all right job of getting both so yeah <laughs> right on right on so jill Aww. tell all the beautiful people why you're extra glitchy today you're on a new yeah. computer oh yeah <laughs> laptop. Um, yeah i'm on on my laptop right now because we, we've been we had lots of uh brownouts this morning and i was nervous about using my big full my main rig so i am am on my laptop and i do have it hooked it has a battery of course and i do have it hooked up to an apc ups so that's always good too but if if the power goes out and I have my big rig on with my three monitors, I only get maybe, you know, 10 minutes at most. <laughs> so that's a thing. <laughs> and, you know, been doing a more skill 18x planning of our Linux Gamecast festivities and and <laughs> planning the Airbnb house. So I'm looking forward to that. It's uh, just been doing lots of packing and planning and, and getting prepared for the big event. I'm very excited. Skill. And, and for legal reasons, this is not a LGC sanctioned event. This is a holy fan. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. So if anything goes catastrophically wrong, it was the community's fault. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so I bought a thing and I lost mm -hmm. a thing. Bitter sweet Aww. news. Ladies and gentlemen, quite unfortunate. Good news. You might remember like two weeks ago, I was looking for, if I get on the right shot, I got a little thing over here, it's called um, Control Surface, and it controls the... Oh, I thought you were petting all of my faces. <laughs> Why would you think that? Because <laughs> that's where the chat was and you were going like this. <laughs> that's creepy. Shh. It'll be over. Just be quiet. Shh. Um... That doesn't make sense on the video version, audio listeners. That's not worth back going back and watching. <laughs> so I wanted a jog dial. I wanted some more buttons to be able to get away with more stuff without having to resort to um, switching around with the mouse and all that. And I found one, finally, for like $89 on Reverb.com. I was very excited about that. And Pedro pointed out, quite rightfully, uh, Saturday night, so it's like, what's wrong with it? It's like, quite a bit. So... That'll be here hopefully <laughs> later this week. I've already ordered the parts I need. I just have to recap most of it to get it fixed. It's a common problem. It's a 19-year-old piece of kit. It's a Mackie mm -hmm. master control unit. So I got that. I'm excited about that. Um, if you tuned in Saturday, you knew I was in a little bit of a bidding war for a unicorn device <laughs> we've yes. been trying to get. <laughs> I got sniped. I did. <laughs> it's <laughs> not at the end. <laughs> I was crushed. My feeling, my feeling was in a bad state for like. Finn has 
just one feeling. 15 or 20 <laughs> minutes. the last one. <laughs> I, I was, grr. And uh, I don't know. I, I didn't think sniping, you know, when you really think you have something, because I had it for like, it, this was like a six day process. And we get to the end, which mm -hmm. was Sunday night. <laughs> I'm like, I got this down. I got like 60 bucks over. You know, I even took like $100 yeah. out of pocket because we didn't really have it as a company to like, just make sure, right? I'm like, there. Yeah. There. We're getting, we're getting this. 35 seconds left. This dude hits and he comes in hard. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he probably tried more than once, too. It's he, like, he got me. He got me because it's like, I'm not spending any more on this thing, which I was like, I really want. He got me, though. I, I, I failed I, I, the impulse reaction. I put another $40 in. I'm like, I don't care. And um, <laughs> it ended up going. And I was like, uh, that's too rich for our blood. Then mm -hmm. it's like, wop, wop. It'll come up for sale eventually again. We'll get that deck link. Uh, I did see earlier today, though, um, on eBay, somebody put up two, but they're like $100 more than what we have. So... Mm. We've been waiting on one for like a year and a half. We can wait a little bit longer because we don't want to overpay yeah. for that nonsense. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's cool. That was my experience. So happiness, <laughs> sadness, recapness, and uh, yay. My feelings completely <laughs> over times. it. It's in a great mood today. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about Linux flaws. That always makes people oh, happy, yeah. right? Yeah. Especially when you hear it's like, oh, sudo has a security vulnerability. Dude, <laughs> come on, man. Sudo yeah. panic. Panic at the sudo. Yeah, let's see yeah. if I can guess the right spot. Uh, our first story this week comes from the Hacker News. Sudo bug lets non-privileged Linux users go booga booga. Also on Mac OS, uh, you can run commands as root. Now, so Joe from Apple Security, he found a nasty little sudo bug that probably doesn't affect you unless you run Mint. I guess maybe or elementary there, apparently there's according like, to Jill's bit in yeah. the show notes <laughs> six possibly eleven people that still run Mint. I'm kidding. I know Mint's still kind of the mild hotness these days. Uh, what went down is this flaw can only be exploited when the PW feedback option is enabled. Like, watch that. So you know when you type in your password, you're giving uh you log in those digits. If you see those little asterisks, you could be in trouble. But you know. If you got that enabled in sudoers, you're running one of two distributions or you're running a Mac. All this has been patched. If you want to find out, you know, just do a sudo L and see if it pops up under matching defaults. If it does, fix it. Yep. Right? Well, it, it, yeah. the vulnerability was disclosed because it's already been fixed. So chances are, if you've been keeping up with uh, your updates, you already saw an update to sudo. I actually saw that a couple of days ago. It's like, oh. Another update to sudo. I wonder what it was mm -hmm. this time. That's what it was. Uh, you're and one it of was those the same people person. too, aren't you? When you see like a random stack of libs, and you're like, ah, some had a problem. Yeah. <laughs> it, I only get worried if it's like libgcc and they tech another number after the minor version. It's like, oh crap, what happened? <laughs> mm. But uh no with this one it was the exact same person that uh, discovered the previous vulnerability with sudo except mm -hmm. this one yeah it's not as easy um to um be affected because most distros by default uh you get you don't get the uh, password feedback as you're typing it in uh and this one it's really clever because basically you have to feed a large enough string uh to sudo via a pipe and it seg faults and just gives you um, admin rights, mm. which is bad nah. when you think about yeah. it. <laughs> Live a little. It's really bad. Live a little. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I've I've never enabled PW feedback. I mean, that, that was just always a no-no to me. But it is enabled by default in the popular elementary OS and uh, Mint, like Pedro was saying yeah. earlier. <laughs> so that's that can be a problem. But they're trying to make it easier for the new user. But, uh, yeah, not good. <laughs> Moral of the story <laughs> is auto-login as root. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Live the puppy life. <laughs> <laughs> Live the air gapped audio box life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, that's probably <laughs> the only true safe one. And even then, someone might find a way to blink a monitor at enough of a frequency that it interferes with the uh, Ethernet cables and then they'll get root access. <laughs> Listen, Pedro, some people have mental issues and you're not helping them out because they're like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm just feeding the... Um, <laughs> yeah, you are. You're the... feeding. Don't, don't feed the dragon, man. <laughs> Aluminium caps. But hey, uh, maybe you're a big fan of uh, IBM Red Hat. Aww. And uh, maybe you saw this bit of news pop up earlier in the week, which was uh, IBM CEO Ginny Rometty is stepping down and uh, Arvind Krishna is going to take over as CEO. However, there was a bit of an unexpected twist mm -hmm. that... Um, Jim Whitehurst is now the owner of IBM. He, mm -hmm. uh, the, well, he's the president. The owner. So, yeah. <laughs> not the owner, but uh, he's the president of uh, IBM. So it's like, wait, didn't IBM just buy Red Hat? So, of course, uh, Twitter went rampant with speculation. I was actually following a couple of people that just... <laughs> went to ham on this whole thing uh and it's like oh um people are actually saying that uh maybe red hat is going to take over ibm mm -hmm. because of this and ibm is just going to become another branch mm. of red hat yep which you know did that prospect as a linux user uh that prospect sounds very very good it sounds amazing can we can we can, can we call it big red <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, actually. <laughs> Not to be confused with big, the bubblegum. Big red. <laughs> oh, no, Joe, we'll buy them too. We're, we're going to be big red. <laughs> well, you know, th this move of Whitehurst to presidency, you know, dem demonstrates that the ideals of Red Hat are truly being integrated into IBM. Like Gina Romani has said and proven uh, many times before. And, you know, I'm also looking forward to what Krishna, who helped with the Red Hat acquisition originally, is going to bring to the table at IBM. He, he's he's brought some very innovative ideas to the table. But I'm actually going to really miss Gina Rometty's and um, her leadership because of her self-confidence, intelligence, and matter-of-fact way of speaking. And, you know, she was really has been... A pioneering spirit who reinvented IBM and led them to a new era of AI, quantum technologies, and cloud computing. And as a woman, I've looked up to Gina as a role model for many years. And under her leadership, IBM's commitment to diversity and inclusion has also advanced. And in 2018, IBM received the prestigious Catalyst Award for Advancing Diversity and in Women's Initiatives. So I'm really going to miss her a lot. Um, I used to, I, I've followed all her talks at the conventions and her writing and um, at all the different events she's been at. So I'm, I'm really going to miss her. She was a good leader for the company. Definitely went in through the transition area. Um, everybody's got, as a person, she seemed like a pretty cool cat. Um, Business-wise, everyone's got their opinions on that. Because um, mm -hmm. you can't say... <laughs> Uh, how many companies? I think IBM acquired like 54 companies oh, during yes. her. And like, <laughs> I can name Red Hat. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but it, it was yeah, a nasty position to be in, though, because you know, you're taking a company transitioning from effectively hardware to mm -hmm. this hybridized cloud solution that they're peddling out. And before you say it, a lot of people's like, ah, just get rid of people. IBM has a long tradition of replacing CEOs around the age of 60. Yeah. Like, that mm -hmm. just happens with the exception of the founder of IBM, does it? So yeah. you can go back and draw a line with that. Like every IBM minus the founder has been between the age of 57 and 62. Mm -hmm. um, it IBM stock jumped by 4.5% last Thursday, so that's not bad for the company. And she's sticking around for another year. She's going to be in the uh, yeah. heading of the board of directors. So this isn't like, boom, I'm just disappearing. Have fun with it. Mm -hmm. So I have to <laughs> yeah. worry about that. Um, it, IBM got in really late on the cloud, and I feel like it's going to be a small miracle. Like the only way they're going to get any significant traction in this, uh, I hope against hopes that they do, but I kind of feel the only way they're going to be pulling that off is with a time machine, which they might not have. Then again, it's IBM. They might have a Power 10 that does things I'm unaware of. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, if Power 9 uh, starts to take... Oh, wait, no. Uh, AMD is kind of 
coming back into the Enterprise yeah. world, so I guess we're going <laughs> to start seeing a lot more epic processors instead of Power 9s. <laughs> and I'll take all of that back, IBM, if you send me some development boards to play with. Come. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Doesn't even need to be like ATX form factor, just something. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I want it. No. All right. Come on. <laughs> Material painting. Yeah. So start painting your 3D models with Armor Paint, which is a standalone software designed for physically based texture paint. It is node based with fully procedural materials. And unlike many other options in the space, completely runs using the GPU and is open source. Uh, two big, two big things that are a big deal. And um, viewport rendering with Vulkan is in the works, which is really wonderful. And um, I was playing around with it um, yesterday and the day before, and it loads really fast, works exceptionally well. And I imported and exported meshes from Blender. Um, from it to Blender and back and forth, and that that worked easily and perfectly. And it is only about eight megs installed. <laughs> that's awesome. You know, that's the beauty of open source software. It's very memory efficient usually. <laughs> and you know, my favorite texture painting software is actually Blender and Maya. The latter being very expensive and proprietary. And which is also, you know, like Fox Dog says in chat, this is taking more than a few design cues from Blender, um, and that's for sure. And, you know, there are a lot of other well-known PBR programs that are used in the industry, such as Substance Painter, ZBrush, Mari, and Mug Mudbox, but all are expensive and proprietary. So it is actually really nice to have an open source you know, option in this space because we have open open source options in, in in every other area, whether it be compositing or three um, D animation and modeling. So it's it's really really great to have a texture painter that's inexpensive and open source. <laughs> it's also inexpensive as free. Of course, uh, Michael yeah. immediately jumped out. This is looking a lot like Blender. It's like it's designed to work with. Blender, so maybe yeah. there's even though it has like a blender map key set that yeah yes, it's, it's probably not a coincidence <laughs> i think it's really cool um now speaking of the funding model mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's straight out of the outdoor playbook it's like the doll software i use if you want like the handy pre-built binary packages you just download them install them you gotta pay a little bit of a fee, which I'm cool with. That's a good way to support that's, a project. Yeah, that's fine. And it's very mm -hmm. reasonably priced. Yeah. What is it? How much that's does it? Like $19, 20 bucks? Yeah, nineteen dollars uh euro on itch.io or nineteen dollars US at ArtStation. Mm -hmm. It's just very inexpensive. Stupid cheap for something it's that cheap. looks this good. <laughs> it's basically a donation, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's really cool. But if you don't want to mess with Tango with it, like Pedro, Pedro looked at it and he's like, ah, source code. Ran away. <laughs> no, no, no. See, I was, I yeah. cloned the Git. I have the Git downloaded. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at the first line. It's like, node, um, doesn't even matter. Just like, the, node. No. You know yeah. what? The only reason I compiled it is because you said that. And I was like, yeah. child. <laughs> yeah, spider gets do. things done, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that, no, that, that was pity. Pity's also a motivator. It's like, yo, you poor thing. <laughs> Three commands. No, I just saw a node. It's like, I know. Mm -mm. Come on, you don't want to install. Actually, node. I, ins I installed node on um, our render because I was like, how bad is this going to be? It's like, oh, 20 megs. That's not bad. No, yeah. no, granted, okay. granted, <laughs> that was like over 67 um, things to install and set up. But yeah, but usually the other things aren't that big, but it's like a ton of them. It's like, no, I don't want to deal with that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it worked out of the box. Uh, yeah. Uh, dependency wise, there's a couple things, but I mean, it tells you right there. I mean, you just read it and be like, oh, okay, I need to throw that in, throw it in. Yeah. There. Uh, completely open source, build yourself, doesn't cost anything. You do got to keep in mind, this doesn't necessarily have releases. So anything when, when you're cloning it, you're going to get stuff that's an active development. No, I, I don't, that's above my pre grade. I, I don't, I don't art very well. So I was like, ah, it's the thing it mm -hmm. runs. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it does remind me of substance painter. 
Yeah, Just definitely. The that, way it's laid that's mm -hmm. clearly what it's trying to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, as a wait a minute, I had to go. If you don't know Substance Painter, it's I think the Adobe product that is yeah. available on Linux. Yes. Yeah. You're. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Besides PDF, but that's another story. <laughs> well, no. you know, you could actually get PDF. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. When I mean yeah. Adobe, uh, it's a real Adobe product, as in you can't buy it. You can yeah. rent it monthly. <laughs> uh huh. Yes. <laughs> good times. Cool project. What do we have? Up yeah. Next? Really awesome. Lightworks. Oh, good news, everyone. Yes. <laughs> Yay. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's something that hasn't popped up in a while. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We, we, we got to do this in two stages. Uh, we, we can either do like, yeah, yeah, hoorah, rah, or like cold, cynical truth. I think we're going to start with a hoorah, yeah. rah. <laughs> okay. <Fair>. So, <laughs> so, yes, this is the Light, <laughs> the Lightworks beta, and it has uh, many new improvements. And uh, actually, four of my favorite improvements to the new beta are industry standard and i needed for, actually for my workflow uh, for instance images now import at the correct scale ratio rather be, than being scaled to the output format added ability to drag an image into the sequence viewer or timeline yay <laughs> and added ability to apply effects to selected timeline segments as well as all as there is now a new right-click speed menu item to easily make speed adjustments of video. And that, that really helps with speed of workflow. And um, another cool thing is they included the audio network um, and Pond5 reality royalty-free audio video clips that can be easily imported and search. And that's a really, that's really nice, nice touch. <laughs> yeah, it's a really actually... Uh, no other um, video editor has that, <laughs> so that's really awesome. And overall, really, I am enjoying the more recent versions of Lightworks. There is a much improved workflow that is in line with the Da Vinci's and Premieres of the world, but at the same time has its own very unique and fast workflow. And, you know, having everything split up in the way it has a, a, a separate audio pa panel and effects panel, well, it's kind of funny that now, you know, DaVinci is, uh, uh, they're using that now in their workflow as well with the, the separate tabs or windows. So it's making a comeback. Uh, years ago, all of our 3D animation and video editors uh, were laid out like that. But, and, and then they moved to everything in one window. And now they're separating everything again, which to me makes more sense. <laughs> more organized. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Pedro? Um, the, the only thought is like, mm -hmm. oh, um, they've added support that you had in the notes, like they added support for Ubuntu 1904. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You mean Fu the one Fu that no, just, listen, man, but future <laughs> proofing. The, it, it's end of life now. It went end of life like future three days ago. <laughs> proofing. <laughs> <laughs> 1904, really? You're killing the Linux industry. Come on, smile. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> Um, you know, they did add support for HEVC, which is 265. And for the most part, it does seem to work. That's what we record to. That's what we edit in. That's what we export to YouTube. Seeking's a little bit of slow. Uh, I fed it some of our source files. I'm like, eh, if I had to work with it, I could. 100% could. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to get it, I had to complete a three-step registration process. <laughs> then I had to install, I only had to install libcg. That was the only depth mm. that wasn't on the list. I was okay. like, oh, boop, boop. It's an NVIDIA thing. Um, now, let's talk about restrictions. This is, this is a restriction that's been a restriction for the demo version of this, you might want to call it. Yeah. Since forever. Back in the day, it kind of made sense. Now, this what I'm talking about is you can only export your work at 720p and H.264. Kind of making this free demo version. Mm, it's so weird utterly useless for testing in 2020 <laughs> yeah <laughs> because 1080p is considered low fidelity um do what da vinci does or something throw a watermark on like some of the filters or something like that let me export it with a big shark over the top mm -hmm. so i can see how it looks um that said 
the available export, you know, I just shot out some stuff that we had. It's heavily CPU dependent. I mean, it was balanced out over 24 threads yes. in this box <laughs> at about 50%. I'm not going back to that lifestyle. <laughs> not going to happen. I, I have uh, been touched by the glorious noodly appendage of uh, compute. Cuda. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yes. being able to render an hour's worth of 1080p 60 video in eight minutes. So, mm -hmm. mm, Cuda. <laughs> yeah, kudos. Oh, the yeah. how fun with those show titles. <laughs> so, something even we, we definitely talked about, um, even on the like Schemecast Weekly, or just like in, in the middle part. I know definitely Pedro and I over the years with um, when Edit Share originally planned uh, the release of um, Lightworks as open source. I'm like, yeah, Yo, we're, we're going to go to an open source model. And we're going to make uh, revenue over plugins. It's like, yay! I got my little pom poms out and I was shaking them. It, it was truly mm -hmm. a horrifying sight, but you know, it was enthusiasm. And I was, I was willing to overlook all types of things because we didn't have a Still super serious, on that. yeah, right. <laughs> uh, pff, yeah, smoke bomb, shut. Because um, <laughs> we needed that, man. I mean, that would have been a giant, giant addition to open source nonlinear video editing. On Linux, it's like we need this. We can take from that. We can improve upon it, and it'll be great for everyone. Never happened again. Smoke bomb on that. I'm like that never happened. We, they haven't even said that. And if they have, I haven't seen it anywhere. Um, so what am I going to say about this? Uh, I, I do a lot of video editing. You might 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 have guessed. So if I'm going to compare this to what we currently use, which is DaVinci Resolve, closed source to closed source, you know, apples to wrenches. I played around with this for an afternoon <laughs> and you know, you can get into it and play with it. You just can't export it and really see, you know, unless it's my type next to resolve. This is a tinker toy in 2020. It, it just is. Mm -hmm. I mean, this light works. The, what was the last movie made with light works? Hmm? <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> no idea. 2013 Wolf of wall street. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was okay. seven years ago. Yeah, yeah, that was that was the last one. And then you go over to like Da Vinci and see how many of the top award pictures of 2019 were <laughs> yes, color graded yes. and edited. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it kind of came in and ate the lunch. Also, it runs on Linux, also has compute for editing. And uh, but Lightworks has a very interesting feature. It, it does one. It is better in one aspect. Well, it's more than one aspect, and that's the price. It costs more than Resolve. <laughs> that's not a good thing Aww. technically winning I mean if we're just playing the numbers game uh, for the full version it's $437 uh, for a full license versus $299 for Resolve mm, yeah mm -hmm. I'm going to say save no. yourself that $138 and just pick up Resolve and maybe learn some skills that will be transferable into the industry so, mm -hmm. should you decide to pursue that in the future Mm -hmm. And you can be on Linux and you can do your thing and everyone will be happy. Nothing against the Lightworks <laughs> team, but yeah, that, mm, I mean. That wasn't a very good release, let's be honest. <laughs> it it's an, it's an interesting piece of software. I don't see any of that out of like anger at them or I, I've let that go. You know, I'm like, okay, fine. We're just going to pretend the open source thing never happened. Mm -hmm. It's times have moved on, man. We have better options. And I'm going to say yeah. Like feature wise, I couldn't recommend anyone spending four hundred dollars for something. That I know, yeah. Da Vinci yeah. offers so much more. Yeah. Da Vinci <laughs> is multiple things with the color grading. You have a full 3D modeling setup in there and all your post production. Yeah. Digital compositing. Mm -hmm. Um uh, effect, post post production effects, lots of them. <laughs> And technically it has yeah. Fairlight for audio, but if you're editing audio and you're nonlinear video editor, you have problems that I can help you with. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So okay. I guess yeah. it's uh, <laughs> the last bit of news and uh, event you have the, uh, the graphic ready. Got what? Huh? Because Microsoft huh? There was, it is. Is. I wasn't ready. I was ready. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, in the interest of Microsoft uh, keeping its love for Linux, they... Um, 
I can't help but feel like it's a little bit ironic to hear Microsoft talk about trust, but they start off the article going, trust is key to open source. Oh, come on. This is from like, the yeah. assistant general counsel, David <laughs> Rubin. At Micro he, he, he looks like he'd only sue you like a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it only sue you in a bad day. Uh, but yeah, no, apparently trust is key to open source. Still ironic coming from Microsoft. But uh, yeah, it's basically Microsoft is trying to create like a chain of trust that if you were to commit um, open source to said chain of trust, then it would be verified and uh, all of the licenses would be um, made Basically, they would make sure all the licenses are in accordance with what they would want to use, and then they would be able to use the code or anyone else who wanted to use the code if they saw the Microsoft Open Chain logo on it, except to version 2.0 yes. now. Uh, mm -hmm. They could see, oh, okay, so I can trust that those licenses are within these parameters, and I really don't need to worry um, about, you know, someone trying to sue me or... Um, the Free Software Foundation getting really angry at me because I'm misappropriating the GPL or something. No one wants to uh, get a strongly worded letter from the FSF. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's basically uh, a way for Microsoft to cover their uh, nice round tushies uh, that if someone was to present them with open source code, they wouldn't necessarily be allowed or want to be bound by the license in question, then they wouldn't get sued. Mm -hmm. that, that's basically what this amounts to. And with them going, mm -hmm. oh, we're an open source company now. I guess they kind of have to have something like this in place. It covers yeah. all parties, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this is yeah. good for Microsoft and it's good Everyone for everyone involved. else, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you can you can try to pull the um, mm. a barrel of Microsoft haterade up to this. Be like, nah, this is good. I'm I'm glad they're doing this, and uh, I don't see the bad side about it. And I, oh, I, no, no I, bad side. It's just the irony no. of it all. <laughs> no, I yeah. just got lost. I was <laughs> looking for open chains that I was like, I wonder what two chains is up to. So I was reading this wiki <laughs> while you were talking. Um, <laughs> that's cool. Well, I thought this was good for on Microsoft, who is following in the footsteps of the likes of Google, ARM, Qualcomm, and SUSE, who Being have evil? already... Yeah, they have open chain conformance. Mm. So that's, that's very good. So that there's a governing body you know that says this has to be done in a certain way um to be legitimately open and that's that's good for microsoft because of all the scrutiny <laughs> that's involved yeah. <laughs> we laugh it's now so but very this time next wordy. year we'll have open source windows 10. <laughs> uh, no yes. no uh it might happen 30 heaven. years in the future but not next year yeah. Oh, come on. Have a little faith. It, it, it may no, be running no. the Linux kernel in a year. That, that I think, is closer to reality. But... They already shipped the it Linux kernel with Linux Windows. Kernel. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean the main, yeah. uh, their, their main kernel <laughs> and T-kernel mm, being, being replaced. Maybe the system that uh, deploys the video stream <laughs> of mm -hmm. your desktop might do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's that. Yes. The cloud operating system mm -hmm. that's just going to be called Windows? It's, it's they're going to drop to 10. Windows XP extended support. Um, <laughs> they make a lot of money out of that. They still. will. Yeah. <laughs> want some Windows 7? Oh, we can make that happen too. Yeah. Mm. That's another revenue source right there. <laughs> Speaking of revenue sources and making things happen. Ah, look at that. Yeah. Segways. Segways, baby. <laughs> um, if you want to support us, you link what we do, you get some value. You're like, hey, man, I like you, Yahoo's. Keep doing what you want to. Uh, and uh, don't don't give me a bunch of ads. Uh, take a little break, like we do each and every week, to thank the beautiful people making this show possible. And that's all of our Patreons at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Mm -hmm. We got a gang of stuff over on our web zone. No ads on our site. No tracking. We host all of our podcasts, all of our video. So there's no, you know, no one's getting your data bits. We got a bunch of ways no to support No tracking cookies. I know, right? Guess yeah. what? <laughs> Keeping 580 gigs of storage warm, kind of expensive. But mm. hey, if you want to buy a t-shirt or something like that, we'd greatly appreciate it. We get a little cut, yeah. just a little taste <laughs> on that nonsense. If you are curious about what is inside of this studio that I'm currently in right now, I've itemized everything. And we, you don't have to buy it from Amazon, but it's free for you to go check out and uh, say, hey, man, what's that thing there? There it is. And speaking of Amazon, we have Wish Zones. Uh, we do have one for the studio. The reason I'm bringing this up is because we got a new thing. I got to show off. 
That's Yay. just really um, boring and curious things that, uh, <laughs> except for this. This I've, I'm just putting there because I thought that was funny. <laughs> 39. <laughs> Oh my goodness. 32 cores of glory. <laughs> like, wow. So, you know something like I've A went and played the lottery and B won. If I'm like, that thing disappears. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I don't even really know what to do with that. <laughs> um so we had a thing show up. Saturday. It's super mm -hmm. fancy. It's a two-port HDMI 2.0 HDR mini splitter amplifier with EDID management. 7.1 channel mm -hmm. supports HDR and 4K at 60. I'm going to Yay. be using this device when we finally um, get our little black magic stuff for the loop back. So we're going to be able to do fun things like, A, it's going to make my life a lot easier to do instructional videos. So I, there will not be unplugging and rewiring of cables every time. Oh, nice. Followed by, I'd even have the option of like, hey, man, it's Sunday. Come hang out with me while I edit video. And I can live stream that. Like, that could also be a thing. But Yay. Horrible idea, which we do each and every time, <laughs> is we will read any message that you include. So hopefully this one will not be too terrifying. One can only hope. Arthurin, <laughs> right, Sivan. Enjoy the split thingy. Technical jargon. Uh, and keep being awesome. You cut me deeply. Um, from Arthurin, P.S. Do a high five with Frank for you, please. Oh. So, if you were watching the pre-show, look now with correct spelling. Yes. It's, yes. No, it, it's no longer rare. Um, I like how you have two different E's. Different E's. Yeah, yes. I know. I mix it up, man. I keep things fresh. <laughs> Isn't that right? Look, there's your high five. Um, oh, have to do a gentle high five with Frank because he's very get, fragile. It doesn't no, have any because you cut off a digit. You, don't, you, you can't startle that man. It's all teeth and bones. Yeah. It's nasty. <laughs> Thank you, each and every one of you, for making what we do possible. It's quite awesome, and we hope to keep on doing it. And you get a bunch of rewards mm -hmm. as Patreon uh, early access to a bunch of stuff, uh, extra hour of our content each and every week as a little bit of a thank you. And uh, right on. So we're done with the shilling. Let's mm -hmm. get with the eating. Maybe a yeah. little slice <laughs> yes. of pie. Yum. Right. Yum. Yum, 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 pie. <laughs> well, uh, this one isn't for eating, but it's certainly uh, a bit of a treat for the eyeballs because, well, guess what? Vulcan is coming to the Raspberry Pi. They have rendered the first triangle. Uh, <laughs> That picture, that <laughs> screenshot was all over Twitter uh, on Monday. It's like, it oh, look. It was. <laughs> I'm just having horrible flashbacks from the time I've made that triangle. It was like, yeah, no. <laughs> As I blindly encourage developers to use this Vulcan, I'm like, yeah, you do it. You're smarter than me. Yeah. So um, you may have... Um, guess that this was coming because earlier on uh mm -hmm. raspberry pi had mentioned that's like oh we are now open gles uh, 3.1 compliant and to you know those of you who remember back in the day when say nvidia and amd were like oh yes we can totally do open gles 3.1 so what comes with that vulcan because it's <laughs> basically you need that feature set and if you support that feature set you can then push vulcan and here we go. So it's just a matter of time until uh, it gets up to a usable state. And everyone is highly encouraged that the moment that they um, push out any kind of drivers that can support Vulcan acceleration, go hammer on it or report all the bugs because this is kind of... Well, I, w I wouldn't say necessary for the Raspberry Pi because it's been, you know, Raspberry Pi is, has done very well all on its own without the help of Vulcan. But this is going to help a lot, especially in uh -huh. pushing 3D into the Raspberry Pi. Well, you're definitely taking it from a yeah. 3D angle. The first thing I think, this yeah. is going to help leverage the playing field a little bit if you're able to leverage compute. Against the, yeah. something like yeah, a Jetson definitely. Nano. Mm. <laughs> it doesn't have an yeah. NVIDIA GPU in it. Yeah, right, so <laughs> if you can get some compute out of this, that's going to help out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for like small training models and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, putting a cluster of Raspberry Pis and teach, uh, do some machine learning. Just teach them how to yeah. do something. <laughs> well, you know, to me, Vulcan this is just, help. you know, so exciting. You know, I'm thoroughly looking forward to watching Vulcan development on the Raspberry Pi. 
because it it's it's huge. It's it, it can affect playing games on Pi, doing graphics, using Blender on the Pi. So you know, <laughs> this is just awesome, and it, and it makes sense. It really does, especially since uh, we have Vulkan already enabled on our phones, Android. So. Yeah, but Should my Windows pie, Phone uh, supports <laughs> DX12, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> there were like two that did. <laughs> and the Apple phone, <laughs> Apple iOS is metal. <laughs> I don't know. If you want to be re retro, man, I mean, you think, you know, you're hot pulling out like a Motorola or Razor flip phone. They pull out a Windows phone and be like, what's up? Yeah. I can take a really... We have one of those in the cupboard at work. Yes. I've been deliberately not putting it in the um, disposal pile. I always hide it. Whenever it ends up on the pile, it's like, nope. Do you, do you keep that? Yeah. One Windows phone item. we have. Yeah. Come on. That's not going the anywhere. Company replacement phone of shame. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me about a flock of pie. Yay! So, I'm excited about this. This is the Synthberry Pie, which is a Raspberry Pi based synthesizer prototype created by Artist Lab. And this amazing synth I just allows feel you bad to for do. a society where you have to be like, this is how long it'll take you to read. You don't know me. <laughs> oh, yeah, one minute. Yes, yes. Yeah. And what's really cool, you know, for, for those of us who are really into synth music, kraut rock, electronic music from, you know, starting from the 60s onwards, you know, this, this amazing synth allows you to do classic frequency modulation with sawtooth waves, square waves, and pulse wave modulation and manipulation. Using a Raspberry Pi with a patch with three that has three oscillators and a delay. And what's amazing is imagine the cost savings of a Synthberry Pi. A classic synth can cost you thousands of dollars or more, you know, in the tens of thousands. A Moog synth, a modular synth, you know, even, even, um, our, our newer Yamaha DX, uh, synths are going for, lots of money so this is just this, this is amazing this will really help musicians and it, I, i'm sure they're going to be working on getting um parts of this released because on at their they have a store with several other prototype arduino based synths and sequencers as well and um that's really awesome <laughs> i think amazing. it's very neat um as far as like <laughs> oh that'd be fun to make when you start getting them mm -hmm. to like since I'm like, yeah, I mean, if you want to be a hipster and go spend all that money, uh, musicians use plugins these days. <laughs> yeah, no, that this is true, but for that analog, uh, hipsters, I, I said hipsters, yes, <laughs> <laughs> call them analog guys all you want, Jill. <laughs> well, a lot of the musicians today are incorporating the analog sounds because they like the, the warmth of the sounds created by you know, the old sense. Like yeah, that's great. And... That's why I can turn up the uh, warm dial on my plug-in. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> instead eight. of this, when you put your hand on the speaker, instead of it being cold to the touch, it's, you know, room temperature. No, I think it's, it's a fun project. And a lot of people do like, um, they like the tactile of like, okay. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, yeah, exactly. you know, don't worry. Those people eventually, they're getting to the age where they're going to start dying out. And, you know, <laughs> No, <laughs> they're musicians. They live oh, a dangerous lifestyle. Some of them, you know. <laughs> listen, listen. I'm having a good time. I own more musical equipment, hardware, yes. like guitars and amps than everyone here, here. So yeah, I'm just poking fun. So yeah. spare me the hate mail or not. How could they do that, Pedro? <laughs> Well, you can totally not spare Venn the hate mail uh, by going to linuxagamecast.com and hitting the contact button. It gives you a form. It's It may look complicated and there's a lot of warnings at the top, but don't worry. As related to this show, the only warning you need to pay attention to is if we can find the answer to your question on the first page of Google, we won't feature your thing. But hey, if you have a Raspberry Pi project... remember, if you're on the second page of Google, you've <laughs> lost the argument. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's gone sorry <laughs> but yeah uh, raspberry pi projects anything that you've done that's even tangentially related to linux lately if you want to share it with us if you want to give us a heads up on a bit of news that we didn't see 
Yes. Just, yeah, drop it in there. Mm -hmm. Do it. Just if you're working on a project made out of awesomeness, subject. we'd love to get Boop. you on the show. You can stop by and say hi and plug your wares. And be like, oh, it's so awesome. That's so <laughs> cool. Get you in and out in 10 minutes. Guaranteed. And that's yeah. hot as it sounds. But until next week, you want to roll mm -hmm. some credits and thank some people? Yeah. Might as well. <laughs> <laughs> Can because do. this show. Especially this, this show, this show was made is... possible by all of you. Yay! All of you crazy, insane people. <laughs> Listen, they're perfectly sane. I know I will not argue their fiscal responsibility, but I think they're a sound mind. <laughs> okay, our, financially our insane, whatever the case may be. <laughs> ah, seriously, thank you, all of you who've made this possible because, yeah. We get to uh, poke some fun at the world of Linux and tell you a little bit about the news each and every week. Just the stuff that we like. Jill's audio just went plump. Oh, was that what happened? Yeah, okay. She's, she started <laughs> waving around and um, gesticulating. And I was like, you're moving a lot and I'm making a bunch of noise. So I look up and she's moving a lot. This wasn't making much noise. Dead. Yeah, I, I double checked, but I was like, I didn't accidentally make <laughs> nope. <laughs> Say bye, Joe. <laughs> bye. <laughs>